In this video, we talk a little bit about our conversion of our standing rigging to Dyneema. If you want to see more about that whole process, we'd be happy to make a video about it. Put your comments down below. Okay, now back to the episode. This time on To The Horizon Sailing. It is haul out day. We take the mast down for an extensive refit, we begin the first step in replacing our leaky fuel tanks, and get to spend one grueling month living in the boatyard, not knowing what we'll find along the way. Oh, ew, this is so gross. I think what we need is a bigger hammer. Rudder shoe. Oh my god. Uh, uh. So here you can see a lot of the bubbling going on. Here, here, all this stuff here. This whole storm sail track goes all the way up. Just below our second spreaders, all the way up there. And it's bubbling all the way down because of dissimilar metals touching and it's just an old, old paint job. And it has begun, everybody. We already took the mainsail off. We have a bare boom. And now we're taking off all the hardware and now we're lashing all the halyards to all the standing rigging so we can take this big old stick out. <laughs> so we're just trying to document everything, make sure we have things labeled or tied up correctly so Lots you know, of pictures. Lots of pictures. And Don't want to lots lose. of blue tape with Sharpie tape. Wanting to save on yard time, we prepped by taking off all the sails and boom, and taking out cotter pins in the rigging. All right, good morning, everyone. It is haul out day. Neither Jack nor I slept very well last night, but I guess that doesn't really matter because today's the day. We're hauling the boat out once again. Foggy, foggy morning out here, headed to the boatyard. You can just barely see Berkeley Pier off in the foggy distance. But we're gonna cut right through it and head over to Berkeley Marine Center. The work is about to begin. It felt just like yesterday that Gemini was hanging in the slings for our last haul out about six months ago. This time, we had two major projects to tackle. The rigging was most likely original and the mast was in dire need of a new paint job. But we also discovered that our fuel tanks were rotted and leaking, which fixing them required some serious grinding and cutting. <laughs> What's going on down there? How's it going? Finally what exposing this piece of uh, bulkhead that was covering up our diesel tanks. There's a lot of bulkhead deteriorated and diesel on this uh, starboard side. So you can see down here how the tanks are rotting. It doesn't take much on both sides. That's a crazy view. We're definitely cutting off the whole tops of the tanks just because we have access now. Especially if we want to do a thin fiberglass blanket on it. Of course, the fuel tanks were built in adjacent to our steering quadrant, so we decided to kill two birds with one stone by dropping the rudder, giving us better accessibility and a chance to service our steering gear. Of course, that's easier said than done.
All right, so we are trying to get the rudder off and I think what we need is a bigger hammer. So we're gonna go see if we can find one in the yard. We hoped that a bigger hammer would do the trick, but luckily we also had some expert opinions from Boatyard Dave, who'd seen it all. Come on, Dave, what's the problem? Down. Down? Uh, yeah. I would take a sander and I'd open up all those seams so I could see it. Yeah. And I'd get a, a little screwdriver. Yeah. Right there and come down. Alright, yeah, because I can see where it's starting to... If you, do, if you went like this, Yeah. Yeah, that rubber, that plastic pushing there. There it goes. Going. Yeah, it's yeah. going. Yeah, oh, baby. Hell yeah. Oh. Success. I get the money shot. Okay. Success followed by profanity. <laughs> so. Always. You should have heard him yesterday, uh, Dave. Hell yeah. Rudder shoe. With the rudder shoe off, the rudder was able to lower down, except for the fact that we ran right into the pavement. We then asked the yard to lift the boat so that we could get the rudder the rest of the way out. Man, that thing is heavier than it looks. Like today is the day we are hauling our mast. I'm so excited, but also super nervous. They just set up the crane next to us here, which means it's getting close. We loosened all our supporting shrouds, leaving the forestay, backstay, uppers, and intermediates tight. We are so used to doing all our own boat work that it was nerve wracking to be sitting back watching our mast get plucked out of our boat. She's out of our hole. Despite our nerves, Cree and the crew who assisted in this process worked like a well-oiled machine, making it look easy. Oh my gosh, she's so tall. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like 10 feet. What do you think you're going to find down there? I don't know. Ew, this is so gross. Oh! What oh, nice, head. and it's all covered up so it didn't get ruined. Oh my gosh, we have to go rinse it off yeah, and take a look cream. at it. Hell yeah. All right, let's go. Oh my gosh, that's so let's awesome. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Traditionally, when a new boat was commissioned, they would place a coin underneath the mast for good luck. This coin was like a time capsule, bringing us back to the very year Gemini was built. Looking at that mast lying horizontal, it was daunting to see the work we had ahead of us. All right, it is after hours and I am trying to get all the hardware off the mast before it rains tomorrow. Well, not really all the hardware, just trying to get the spreaders off at least so that we can roll it into the container back there so that it'll be protected from the rain and we can continue to work on it. So that's my task for the night. All right, we've almost fit the whole mast in the shed. Wow, it feels so much bigger now that yeah. it's in this tiny container. It really does. Wow, the spreaders are off. All the wire rigging is off and labeled. And now we've only got the halyards, all the blocks and shackles and all, all the, the synthetic rigging and all the mast heads. Three rivets per messed up. With no time to waste, we got right to work doing just that. It's gonna be so many freaking rivets to take out for the, for the storm cell track. And the mast steps. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Good morning and Merry Christmas! All right, it is Christmas day here at the boatyard. Unfortunately, this year we had to forego any fun Christmas plans and keep working on our boat and all the projects we've got going on. So this morning I get to do some Christmas dishes in the sink down at the boatyard. 
office because we can't have any running water coming out of our through holes. So I can't use the sink on the boat. So it's a little bit of shuffling up and down the ladder and everything, but we're gonna get some clean dishes and make some delicious breakfast and see what kind of work we're gonna get into today. Merry Christmas, kitties. It's boatyard Christmas. <laughs> We won't bore you with the footage of us sanding our hearts away on Christmas Day. Instead, cue the nature shots. Although our Christmas was anything but exciting, we did receive the best Christmas gift of them all. My parents came a couple days later to help get some work done on the mast. And you know what they say, many hands make light work. We were so grateful for their help and holiday cheer. Once we cut away the old fuel tanks and serviced the steering gear, we were ready to put the rudder back where she belonged. All right, what did you just discover? Well, I woke up this morning and I worked on this uh, steering coupling um, all day yesterday. and. We had a really nice 4200 seam to hold everything on. And then I get to the van this morning and I pick it up. I'm like, oh, this looks awesome, cool. I forgot the bushing that's supposed to be inside. Okay, down the hole. Okay. Hopefully we can get this coupling to stay in place. Jack's gonna start lifting the rudder and we'll see how it goes. Stop! I might need the car, Jack. What happened, honey? It just started to slide up. It, yep. The shaft moved up to where it's sticking out a tiny bit, but now but it's the just... Coupling is coming now, up. I think because the, sh the rudder post is that funny like square at the top and then it gets round, I think the round part is just starting to push okay. through. Hell yeah. That's what we wanted. So it's definitely just a little bit of shaft packing. Our boat looks like a boat again. She's got a rudder. We're getting the rudder shoe put back on and hopefully be going back in the water tomorrow. For us to splash the next day, we had a long night ahead of us. All right, we are about an hour and a half from Munch. Um, we don't have the steering chains with the cable connected to the quadrant yet. So we have to use our emergency tiller, which we've actually never used. Um, but the funny thing is, it's facing the wrong way. So normally a tiller is facing forward. So if I want to go to starboard, then I have to push to starboard, which is exactly opposite of what a tiller is supposed to be. <laughs> We're really close. Yes, that's fine. I'm not worried. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit get, of worry. I just want to get back in the water so we can uh, keep working on our mast and get this thing set up. Yesterday I went and bought a, all of our Dyneema for our standing rigging and low friction rings for the spreader tips. With the rudder serviced and back in place, we were able to go back in the water, even if we still didn't have a mast. We are floating again! <laughs> Finally! We have no mast. Our steering gear is still all taken apart and getting remade. And... And we're running off a, and a we're jerry running can off of a for our fuel system for the engine. <laughs> so we're definitely a Franken boat at the moment, but not for long. But we're floating. Hopefully. And we're floating. Finally. So today we're going to modify the spreader tips to accept our synthetic Dyneema. So I'm going to wall this out a little bit. That's what it looked like originally. It's just not wide enough for our low friction rings that are going to hold the synthetic rigging. And we have the mast. It's 
spinnaker pole and boom all prepped and ready to be washed with Dawn soap. Then we'll chemically treat it with uh, Aladine to etch it so the primer can stick to it properly. The boom all hung up. Mass will be hung up tonight when we're done. And you can see the spinner poles hung up as well. Well, today is the day that we have been waiting for for quite a while now. The painting is going to begin today on the mast. Julio is supposed to be here in probably about a half an hour to start the primer on our mast project. Yay! I'm so excited. Can't wait to see what the first coat of primer looks like. All right, Julio sprayed primer. So now I'm gonna sand it all down with 220. Once the primer was sanded down with 220, we left it to Julio, the painting master, to make that top coat glisten and shine. All right, the mask is done. It is painted and we're going to pull it out of the shed. We reveal our stunning new paint job, have a very special visitor, and get every bit of hardware back on the mast. Catch us next time as we finally re-step the mast, becoming a sailboat once again. We head straight for some sailing and time on the hook at our favorite spot.